No pop. Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vim PF, and today we've got another instalment in my journey in rye. This here is something that most people in the world should be able to get. Maybe not everybody, but I would wager most of you. This is something that I can get on my supermarket shelves, which is pretty awesome. And this is the Jim Beam Rye Pre-Boat Prohibition Style. <laughs> there you go. Now, it's had a couple of image changes over the year, but this is what we've got right now. It's this kind of green label, matches with the rest of the Jim Beam kind of line a little bit more. But uh, let's have a little look into more about this whiskey and find out kind of where it's coming from. Now, all the marketing on this is kind of uh, surrounded around kind of cocktail whiskies. It even says it on the uh, on the bottle down here, uh, classic all-American spirit, the perfect choice for any whiskey cocktail. Obviously, I'm going to be trying this straight. So uh, depending on what I say, you know, if you like this in a cocktail or you like it straight, that's up to you. But I'm going to review it as a kind of straight whiskey. I'm not a huge fan of whiskey cocktails. I've only tried maybe a handful that I really do like, so I don't drink them very often. But anyway, the reason why it's called pre-prohibition style is allegedly they've used a recipe that's before the 1920s in America, you know, prohibition, the, uh, the illegal to sell, make, whatever, distribute whiskey and spirits or alcohol of any kind between 1920 and 1933. This is uh, allegedly a style from before that era. Now, whatever, you know, we can't really check that, so fine, we have to go with it. But the kind of cocktail thing, um, makes me a little bit worried because it's like, should I enjoy this or not? I don't know. Should I mix it? I don't know. But let's get into it and see what we've got on the nose, shall we? Before that, actually, to be fair, let's talk about the glass. I've just been up to Glasgow, if you saw my uh, Instagram feed. If not, go over there and check that out. But uh, I've got my Jason Whiskey Wise Glencun glass that he kindly gifted to me. So if you haven't already checked his channel out, make sure you head over there. He does really good in-depth reviews on specific expressions and it's kind of a deep dive onto the actual facts and figures of the distilleries and the expressions. Really good channel, go and check him out. Anyway, let's go and check out the nose of this and see what we've got, shall we? Now, something I noticed right away is that it's got a much more understated nose than some of the other ryes I've been covering. If you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know this year, 2019, I've been covering a lot more rye, it's trying to get into the rye, but I've been struggling with it. It's not a flavour that I particularly lean towards naturally, but I've been buying them anyway because I need to expand my palate, you guys want to see rye, so I'm doing it. This is a little bit more understated than most of them. A lot of them are quite in your face spiciness, but I get a lot of kind of caramel, vanilla, even a kind of weird apple note that I didn't think I would get off something like this. Usually I get a lot of apple and orchids and stuff off Speyside scotches. Yeah, generally, it's quite a nice, a nice subtle nose. Let's try the palette. Now again, you're getting that kind of rye spiciness that you would expect to get from a rye, but it's it's much lighter in character. It isn't, uh, it isn't in my face, it isn't kind of dominating the palate, it isn't dominating my nose. After that, I'm getting a little bit more cherry, more of that caramelness. Caramelness, there you go, I've invented a new word today. Mm. Yeah, the finish is a little slow. It's kind of, yeah, short, slow. A little bit spicy but having said that most of that sounded probably quite negative to a lot of people but I actually quite like it mainly because it's a good entryway into rye I imagine this tastes great in some cocktails don't disagree with that at all I probably will never know unless somebody makes me one I don't think I'll go out of my way to make a cocktail maybe one day I'll start doing it on the channel if you want to see stuff like that let me know I'm happy to do it if people want to see it but like I said earlier, I've been struggling with rye. Uh, they've, they've got a very distinct and kind of harsh and spicy, overpowering flavor for me. And it's not something that I generally like naturally, but I'm enjoying this bottle so far because it is the understated version of all of those. It's kind of like, imagine if you will, like a Laphroaig, you know, if you're not, if you love Laphroaig, great. For me, I wasn't always into Laphroaig. 
but something like the little frog select the kind of new you know i've done a review of that so if you want to go and check that out go and check it out but it's their kind of new entry level one a lot of people gave it a lot of criticism for being weaker a little bit more mellow but i think it's a good thing because it gives people a bit more of a gateway a bit of an entryway a bit of a bridge into the Lafroig world without being so overpowering you know the 10 is really quite a strong flavor and this is kind of similar to, to those kind of vibes right so we've got a nice entry level rye and if it is what the pre-prohibition style is then absolutely fantastic but i kind of wish i'd have tried this first before trying the other ryes that i had and maybe now i'll have to go back to those ryes to see how it compares to this but you know i'm enjoying this bottle so far we'll continue to enjoy it maybe i'll try a cocktail or two but i can't guarantee that who knows Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and today we're going on the another journey in my rye. Blah, blah, blah. 